It is a great honor and joy to speak about the relevance of being Vivekananda today with all of you nestlings who are engaged in a work of social transformation and that, that too in the name of Bhagini Nivedita. Bhagini Nivedita, the great daughter of Swami Vivekananda, who herself was transformed completely by Swami Vivekananda's austere penance. And then she transformed so many people, whoever she touched. It was like a golden touch, Midas touch. Whatever Nivedita touched was changed into something that loved Bharat beyond any imaginable limits. May it be Arvind Ghosh, may it be Supramanyam Bharati, may it be Nandalal Bose, all these great people, Jagdish Chandra Basu, were transformed into nation builders by Bhagini Navadita's inspiration. So being Vivekananda, remembering Vivekananda on his 159th birth anniversary and remembering him for being him. That is how puja word is defined in Sanskrit. The Sanskrit word puja, which is generally translated in English as worship. But the puja word, in fact, in Sanskrit means punareva jayate iti puja. To be born again like the person whom we worship, whom we idolize. If I am worshipping Shiva, so the ideal is Shivam Bhutva, Shivam Yajet. I have to be Shiva to worship Shiva. And that's why I like the topic when it was uh, proposed that I should speak on this topic. The topic is being Vivekananda and the relevance of being Vivekananda today. When we define today, we are going in a world of, in an era of transformation. It is a twilight movement for the whole world. On one hand, there are existential problems. When we discuss about global terrorism or global warming, the problems of the environment that are before us, now we are going through the third cycle of the pandemic and things like that. When we discuss them, when we think about them, when we brood over them, on one hand, we find that the whole world is going through an existential crisis, even at the economic level, even at the level of poverty, even at the level of basic needs like hunger. More than 1 billion people are sleeping hungry even today after so much of uh, progress, so much of advancement, so much of science and technology and everything. So with all these problems and all these existential challenges before the humanity, when we try to define today, that is not the only way we can look at today. In the reference to Swami Vivekananda's performance at the all religious parliament in Chicago in 1893, on that background, on the last day, on his last speech by Swami Vivekananda on 23rd September, in that conference, what he said, on that, in that context, if we see today's world, we see that what he had warned has come true. And on the other hand, what he had proclaimed that if the humanity accepts the Eastern ways of living, the Bharatiya way of living, the Sanatana way of living, 
the whole perspective of the humanity may change and then we may achieve the ultimate goal of universal well-being sarve bhavantu sukhina so on one hand we have challenges on other hand we are in a twilight where the world is ready to accept the bharatiya way of life on 21st june 2015 when the international day of yoga was observed by more than 193 countries all over the world and when they were performing surya namaskar and when they were bowing down on their own lands maybe in trafalgar square or the times square or in belgium or holland the netherlands australia mauritius or even in kuwait bahrain even in those places when were they were doing omkara and surya namaskar i was reminded of swami vivekananda and his what he talked about the destiny of bharat the destiny of bharat which every nation has to fulfill swami vivekananda said every nation has got a message to deliver a destiny to fulfill and a mission to accomplish these are the three things every nation has to do and that's why when this na- these nations become powerful they change the destiny of the world according to their own swabhava their own nature when britain become powerful because the basic swabhava nature dharma of britain is politics when three to or four people come together in britain they will discuss politics so politics is the crux of british life so when britain became powerful it turned the whole world into a colony half of the world into a colony and every other nation was trying to do the same thing because the political supremacy became the center of the world this is what swami ekananda said in lahore in 1897 in his beautiful lecture on common basis of hinduism swami ekananda says this he said when germany became powerful because this germany is a military nation the national dharma of germany being military power when germany became powerful twice in the 20th century both the times the whole world was put into world war first and world war 2 swami ekananda almost prophesied about wto when he said america if one day it becomes powerful he is speaking in 1897 when america was not the powerful nation but it was a growing nation with its power in science technology and economy after second world war when swami ekananda when swami ekananda professed in 1897 that america if one day it becomes powerful it will turn the whole world into a market place so when in 1999 world trade organization was formed and the whole world had to sign it it was as if swami ekananda's prophecy was coming true after narrating all these example and one example he gave about france he said france aesthetics and art is the at the crux of french nationhood so if france become powerful it will turn the whole world into some art show so that is that is yet not come true that prophecy but swami vivekananda talked about bharat he was talking about bharat what is the dharma what is the swabhava of bharat what is the message that bharat has to deliver what is the destiny that bharat has to fulfill and what is the mission of bharat so he said bharat never aspired to become the world leader bharat never wanted to be the political leader of the political master of the world we never conquered the world we never sent our militaries and armies to conquer the world our traders went all over the oceans thousands of years we crossed the nations with uh, across the oceans with our navy navigated trades and paths which prospered like anything but we never turned the world into a marketplace because that is not our swabhava then what is our swabhava swami ekananda in that 1897 lecture common basis of hinduism delivered in lahore he says bharat when it becomes powerful it becomes vishwa guru the guide of the whole humanity guide of the whole nation that is the destiny of bharat to lead the whole humanity on a path of 
spirituality, practical Vedanta. That's what Swami Ekananda says. So this is how we define today. On one hand, the humanity is facing problems of existentiality. On the other hand, it is ready to accept the Bharat's message of spirituality, the Bharat's message of oneness, the Bharat's message of practical Vedanta. Thus, this turning point came on 21st June 2015. <coughs> when the whole world accepted the ideal of yoga, even during the pandemic, there were talk of lifestyle changes. When the hypertension, diabetes became pandemic in the whole world, they are semi-pandemics. Almost third person is having these kind of psychosomatic ailments and the doctors say they cannot be just treated with pills and operations and technology and science. They need lifestyle intervention. Dean Ornish was the White House physician, a heart specialist, a cardiologist, who was giving his, uh, who was looking after the presidents, Bill Clinton and others at that time. He wrote the book, Lifestyle Intervention Theory. That change of lifestyle is again coming back to the Bharatiya way of life. So Swami Vivekananda's prophecies is coming true. In this today, in this frame of reference of today, in today's topic, we will come to the relevance of being Vivekananda. And for that, we have to understand what is being Vivekananda. Being Vivekananda is questioning. Questioning one's own self. Questioning one's own belief. Swami Vivekananda was a great follower of Shiva. He worshipped Shiva. Then he changed and started worshipping Rama. And one day, when he, one day when he heard from a storyteller about Hanumanji, about the gate at Anjaneya, Bajrangabali, and the, in the amicable style of all those uh, pravachan cars and all those storytellers, great storytellers, on the day when he was talking about Hanumana to glorify Hanumanji in superlatives, that, uh, that pravachan car, that storyteller started comparing Hanumanji with Rama, Sri Rama and said, Sri Rama could not have done anything without Hanumana, though Hanumanji would not have agreed that. Hanumanji would say it is all because of Rama's Prabhutai, Rama's glory that I am basking in his glory. But the Pravachan card to glorify Hanumanji said, Rama could not have done anything in his life but for Hanumanji. And then he added one more thing. Hanumanji was more powerful than Sri Rama because Hanumanji was a bachelor, was unmarried. So, so this small Narendra came home and he threw away his Rama Sita idol out of the window and put Hanumanji there. He was ready to challenge his beliefs. Every time when he said, if God is there, I should see him. When somebody would say that I am meditating on God, he would go and question Keshav Chandra Sen, Devendranath Thakur, the great Brahma Samajis. He was influenced by them. But when, he, when Devendranath Thakur was meditating in a boat in the Ganges, Narendra, the young Narendra, the graduate Narendra, uh, undergraduate student Narendra swam across and went into that boat and asked Devendranath Thakur, have you seen God? <coughs> Devendranath Thakur cannot answer it in affirmative. So he started giving excuses. Oh, your eyes are so beautiful, Narendra. Do you meditate? You should meditate. You have got a spiritual power. And Narendra said, don't diverse. Don't digress from the topic. Answer my question. Have you seen God? Devendranath said, no, I have not seen God, but I can see in your eyes that you will one day see God. Narendra was not impressed. He, so being a Swami Vivekananda is not being impressed by anything, but questioning, questioning. And not just questioning others, questioning your own self also. He kept on questioning till he got the answer from the great sage of Dakshineshwara, Gadadhara, 
Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa told him, yes, I have seen God. I can see the God as clearly as I can see you, more clearly than you. And the next question was, can you show me? And again, the answer was, yes, I can. And Thakur Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa touched him, gave him Shakti Pada Tiksha at that moment. when Swami Ekananda in his lecture, my master in London, narrates that beautiful experience when Thakur Ramakrishna touched with his lotus feet to the heart of Swami Vivekananda and everything started diluting and everything started dissolving into one unknown oneness. And he was afraid and he said, oh, I have got my family. Don't do it to me. Stop, stop. And Sri Ramakrishna stopped that experience. But within three months, he attained that Nirvikalpa Samadhi. So that first yes, is quest. Second being Vivekananda is being compassionate, Karuna. That Karuna is there right from his childhood till the end. Even at his glorious days in Chicago, when the whole world was worshipping him, he was a celebrity there. When in Chicago, everybody was impressed and everybody was running after him, taking his autographs, trying to take photograph with him. At that time, Swami Vivekananda was pained, was crying, was weeping in every place with where he stayed. <coughs> Sister Gargi, Mary Louis Burke, almost visited every one, every person, every place where Swami Vivekananda stayed in the West. And she had she has written in her beautiful volumes on discoveries, new discoveries in the Swami Vivekananda in the West, new discoveries. In those six volumes, she goes on writing wherever she went. She was narrated anecdotes that where, where Swami Vivekananda was sleeping, that bed was so turmoil. The whole night Swami Vivekananda could not sleep. He he used to weep for days, when Mrs. Oli Bull, whom Swami Ekananda used to call my mother in America, mother of America, Miss Oli Bull, when she asked Swami Ekananda, why are you weeping, Swamiji? Why are you crying so loud? Is there any problem? Do you have any physical problem? Should I call a physician, a doctor? Swami Ekananda said, no, mother, you have given me such a luxurious bed to sleep, but I cannot sleep here. Why? Because when I sleep here, I am reminded of thousands and thousands of my brothers and sisters on the streets of Bharat, which do not have bed to sleep. And they die there out of this cold. I am reminded of them. They are my brothers and sisters. So that Karuna, that compassion, that is Vivekananda. And the third and the most important aspect of being Vivekananda is Vairagya. The renunciation, giving up of everything. He did not possess anything. Even when Ramakrishna Matan Mission was formed, and when Ramakrishna Matan Mission was to be built, Belur, Belur, that land was purchased. And on that land, that Belur Mat was to be uh, built. So many donations had come from all over Europe and America and from Bharat also. But there was a plague outbreak in Kolkata. And everybody was doing seva of the plague patients and victims. Swami Ayakananda put all his sannyasins, including Bhagini Nivedita, to do the seva. On the streets of uh, Kolkata, they used to do the cleaning part of it, going, doing dressing of those plague patients, even carrying the dead bodies to the crematorium. Everything they did. And the money which had come for the building of Ramakrishna Mat, that money was also put into the seva of the plague patients. That kind of a compassion Swami Vivekananda had, and out of compassion, he would renunciate anything. He can give up anything. And that beautiful story of uh, that beautiful experience Swami Vivekananda has narrated in his own words when Ramakrishna made him have the Sakara Darshana, the actual Darshana of actual vision of Mother, 
Kali at Dakshineshwara. At that time, Swamiji's Narendra's mother, Bhuvaneshwari Devi, was passing through the whole family, was passing through a very bad time. She did not have anything to feed all these three siblings. Swami Yaganda used to, was trying hard for getting some employment. For some days, he worked in uh, Ishwarchand Vidya Sagar's school as principal. But somehow there was no, uh, some disagreement between the two and he left that job. He was searching new job and not getting any. He could not provide for the mother. His younger sister was waiting for marriage, but he could not manage that. And during that period, when he was so much upset with his family problems, he went and asked Ramakrishna Paramahansa Thakur, you always speak to Mother Kali, Bhavatarini Ma in the Dakshineshwara temple. You talk to her every day. Your mother talks to you. Why don't you tell her my problems? Why don't you tell her my agony? Why don't you plea for me and ask mother to provide for my mother Bhuvaneshwari? Why don't you ask Kali? Thakur was patiently waiting for this moment. Swami Ekananda, though, though he had attained Nirvikalpa Samadhi in Nirakara, did not accept the Sakara, did not accept idols to be true. He said these idols are only of stone. He used to mock at a Thakur talking to Mother Kali. Even after having so much Shraddha over the Guru, his questioning did not stop till he himself had the experience, Anubhuti, the realization of Sakara Darshan. One which is, one which is beyond idols, the same is also there in the idols. When Swami Vivekananda himself got that experience, that realization, then only he accepted. This was the moment. Thakur said, no advocate, no is needed. Nobody can, the, there yes. is no need of any advocate. Vedita endeavors for Mother. You are talking to your own mother. You don't need any advocate. I don't need to do your advocacy with Mother Kali. You yourself go there and she will give you darshan. So Vivekananda went inside. And when he went inside, he had that aesthetic, that ecstasy of experience of Chinmaya mother <coughs> in front of him. The super consciousness of motherhood, glorified before his own eyes. <coughs> looking, looking at that mother, he forgot everything. He forgot about the poverty. He forgot, forgot about his own mother's hunger. And what he asked, he asked only three things. Jnanadu, give me knowledge. Give me bhakti. Pure dedication. Pure oneness. Bhakti is being one with God. The, the antonym of bhakti is vibhakta. Vibhakta means which is not connected. So bhakti, jnana, jnana means knowledge, pure knowledge of oneness. Bhakti means pure oneness, with a pure, pure being one with the God. And the third thing he wanted was vairagya. Complete renunciation. This is what he got. So this is being Vivekananda. Jnana, Bhakti, Vairagya. Jnana through quest, Bhakti through dedication, and Vairagya through renunciation. Quest, dedication, renunciation. This is being Vivekananda. Today is an opportunity at twilight for Bharata Mata to become Vishwaguru once again. The world is waiting for us and world has that kind of problems which need solutions and the solutions which can be given by Bharatiya Sanskrit, by Bharatiya way of life. We have the solutions. We have the capacity to provide the solutions. 
the world is ready to accept the solution. This is today. And being Vivekananda is Jnana, Bhakti, Vairagya. Quest, dedication, renunciation. Now relate these two. Relevance of being Vivekananda today. If you want to solve the problems of the humanity, the existential problem of the world, what we need today is these three things. Knowledge, the quest for knowledge. Answering, asking this question, who am I? What is the purpose of my life? What am I going to contribute? Because Swami Vivekananda said, they alone live who live for others. Rest are de more dead than alive. Are we ready to contribute? What is going to be my contribution? So number one is quest. Quest for your own goal of life. Aligning that goal of life to the goal of na uh, nation and then contributing to the whole world. Number one is quest. Number two is dedication. Complete dedication. We have to give ourselves up. Time, energy, everything has to be dedicated. And the third is renunciation. Dedication is not possible without tyaga. Tyagena ekena amritatva manashi. So renunciation, giving up, giving up, tyaga. That is, these are the three things which make Vivekananda today. So let us on this 159th birth anniversary of Swami Vivekananda, let us take a resolve in our own mind. Let us question ourselves. Am I ready for jnana, bhakti, vairagya? Am I ready for this quest, dedication and uh, renunciation? Am I ready to renunciate? How much renunciation I can do? How much time I can give for the nation building work and so that Bharat Mata can become Vishwaguru? How much time I can devote? How much energy I can put into this? What is my Vairagya? What is my Samarpana? What is my dedication towards the nation? What is the extent of dedication, extent of my being one with nation? Swami Ramananda used to say, I am Bharat. That is what Vivekananda is. That is what Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore said. Vivekananda was complete Bharat personified. How much dedication are we ready to give? And the third, what is our quest in life? Are we ready to question ourselves? And the question, the paradigm that is being paddled, the narrative that is being thrust upon us, are we ready to question? So this questioning, dedicating, and renunciation. This is the essence of being Vivekananda, which is most relevant today because this is the most opportune time for Bharata Mata and the sisters and daughters of Bharata Mata to contribute with their own might to make Bharata Mata Vishwaguru once again, because that is what Swami Vivekananda wrote to Alasinga Perimal in which he says, I do not look into the future. I, am, I do not believe in fate. I do not dare to look into future. But one vision I see as clear as my life in front of my eyes. And what is that vision Swami Vivekananda saw? My ancient Bharat Mata has arisen once again and sitting on a throne she is more glorified than ever. And that Swami Vivekananda's vision is about to come to. Let us all dedicate ourselves and give our best of our capacities and might to fulfill that vision of Swami Vivekananda and make it into a reality. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. That was indeed a very, very delightful discourse that we had today. Uh, there was so much to take away from your uh, monologue, especially understanding how to chart our way through this existential crisis that we are going through. To know what it means to be Vivekananda today is to question ourselves 